listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Hello! You're listening to Animal Party on Pet Life Radio with Deb Wolf. And coming to the party, preparing you for your partying for Christmas and Hanukkah, which has already started. We're on the sixth day already. We're way ahead of you. But uh, preparing for Christmas and preparing for the holidays and the gifts that you might want to get, and maybe the gifts you want to avoid, we've got Stacy Mantle from Pets Weekly. Welcome to the show, Stacy. Well, thanks for having me, Deb. It's great to be here. <sighs> We're in Canada. Me and my, my pack of dogs at Camp Good Dog up in Canada, and they are telling us we're about to get snow any minute. Snow's coming, snow's coming. Calgary Airport's closed. Calgary Highway 1 is closed. That's a Trans-Canada. That's our biggest highway. It's closed. There's all kinds of snow all over the country. Not where I am yet, but they tell me it's coming. So have you got anything on your list for all those dogs and cats and people stuck in the snow? Oh, we've got so many fun things on the list. You know, we've got, you know, a whole list of durable, warm coats for our pets. And I know a lot of us are not fans of dressing up our pets, but there's really value in doing the coats, I think. You know, during the winter time when you're running them outside and inside and, you know. And well, those it depends are- on the coat, too. If you've got a really old dog, or, you know, that, or a dog who's just had surgery or had a patch shaved off its coat. I mean, there are some extremes where you really do need a coat, no matter how furry and healthy your dog was when he was healthy. If he's like 13, 14, 15, and it's below where you want to go yourself without a down coat, then he needs some protection. You know, the greyhounds, the dogs with hardly any fur, they don't want to be out there in the snow. Right, Stace? Absolutely. And we have some, you know, we have one dog that has a lot of hair and he's fine. He never has to wear one. But even out here in Arizona, when our low, like our cold snap's going to be about 40 degrees, you know, and that's coming tomorrow, our dogs freeze. So, you know, with the pit bull kind of mix and they need to have coats on or they get too cold to be out there. Yeah. And I know people make fun, but see, that's part of the value too. You were saying there's a value to this. There's comedic value. Go for there's it. If you get a dress your dog up in a coat, go big, go like big. What should they do, Stacy? Well, you know, we've got some fun coats that we really, really like. Thunder Sweater just came out. Well, Thunder Coat just came out with their new Thunder Sweater. And basically, it's a little art. Okay, but that's something sweater. else, right? That's for well, stress, well, isn't it? It's for stress. The, jet, the sweater itself, the shirt, is for stress. But now they've added a component to where you can put a warmer coat on them. So they already have the shirt on, but they can put a sweater that just Velcros over the top. And then they can be warm when you take them outside. So there's not a lot involved with putting a new coat on or taking off the thunder shirt and putting on a sweater or a coat. It's really nice because it just attaches to the thunder sweater. So it kind of serves two purposes, which is awesome for the holidays. Keeps them calm during the day, you know, or when you have company over. And then when you need to take them outside, you can just put the sweater on top of them and they'll give them that added level of comfort. The thunder shirt is something we've talked about before. If you're just hearing about it for the first time now, it's a product you put on a dog who's really stressed out. Usually it's about thunder, which is why they came up with the name, but they can be stressed out about something else like gunshots or a big storm or trains or travel or a move. There's a lot of things that could stress out a dog. The shirt is basically just designed to really fit tight. It's almost like the latest men's athletic wear that the guys are all wearing at the gym. Yeah, I notice. The stuff (laughs) stuff that clings, you know, it's like that. It clings and it, it squeezes them. It gives them pressure the whole time they're wearing it, like they're swatting. And for some reason, nobody really knows why, it calms dogs who are the type to pant and and, uh, pace and uh, try and escape and get all stressed out, pick at themselves, those type of dogs. You put this on them and they just chill out. It's like the chill out shirt. So to be able to just throw on something for warmth on top of that is good. I I was watching Dog with a Blog, which my kids love and I love too. And uh, the big dog was joking about little dogs. And he said, there's two kinds of little dogs, vicious And shivering, which are you, you know? And it was like, okay, yeah, shivery little dog, vicious little dog. If you got a shivery little dog, try a jacket. There's no, you know, and try one that makes him look like a hot dog or something funny. Because why not? It'll amuse everybody. It'll cheer everybody up wherever you go. And through Pets Weekly, you can find this crazy stuff. Right, right, Stace? Absolutely. You know, and I know up in your area, it gets really cold. My dogs would never stand a chance up there. 
So we also like the Comfy Tails coat, and it's perfect for the little shivery dog, as you say, which is so true. Comfy Tails has little warming packs that you can put in the microwave, and it kind of just inserts into the coat or the harness. And they have a little coat that fits over top of all of it. And so you just keep the harness on them, put the little warming pad in there, and it'll keep their chest a little bit warmer and, and kind of radiate the heat. So it's kind of really nice for, for areas in your neck of the woods, which is freezing cold. I don't think any of us would stand a chance up there. And that's called Comfy Tales. Well, we've got lots more for your list, for your tree, for the last two nights of Hanukkah, for whatever you're thinking for those belated presents. Nobody minds a late present. I mean, it's a present after all. So we've got lots of suggestions for the pets in your lives and some fun things coming up from Stacy Mantle at PetsWeekly.com, plus some safety tips from me about your tree and your decorations and even your big dinner and how to share with your pets without sending them to the emergency clinic. So stay tuned to Animal Party on Pet Life Radio with Deb Wolf. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere, because the best is yet to come. Stick around. Every pet is unique. Maybe they're gray in the muzzle, yet young at heart. Maybe they're growing out of the puppy stage and into their paws and ears. Or maybe they're just trying to maintain a more girlish figure. At PetSmart, we have the right food for your pet at a great value for you. PetSmart. Be better together. Go to PetSmartDeal.com and save up to 30% on awesome gifts for the pets and pet people in your life. Toys, collars, leashes, PetSmart gift cards, treats, and more. Go to PetSmartDeal.com today. P-E-T-S-M-A-R-T-D-E-A-L.com. Pause up. I'm Arden Moore, and I'm here to tell you about a revolutionary new product that literally swipes away cat hair from virtually any surface. You know, most of us struggle with a roller or vacuum cleaner to clean up cat hair, but anyone who has tried either of these knows they just don't work very well. But Swipe It's patent pending glove has a magnetic-like quality that removes cat hair from almost everything. Right, Ziki? <coughs> Right, Murphy? And best of all, Swipe It's is machine washable, so you can use it over and over again. To order, just visit SwipeIt's.com. That's S-W-I-P-E-T-S. A simple solution for shedding. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. You're inside the VIP room. With the hottest party in town. Back to the party. Let's go! Hello! You're listening to Animal Party on Pet Life Radio with Deb Wolf. And it's getting to be the holidays. Snow is coming soon. You got your coats for your dogs if they need them. You got your booties for your dogs. Well, booties are tough. Some dogs want them, some dogs don't. I highly recommend you rinse dogs' feet, their paws, after they come in anywhere that's using salt. And even worse than salt is the stuff they're using most recently here in Canada on the main roads, which is a coating they apply two or three times only. And it coats the road almost like a wax. It's chemicals. And it basically makes the snow melt whenever it hits the road as it comes. But that on the dog's feet, it's designed to work on the road for weeks or months. The dog's running barefoot on it, maybe the first day it's applied. So you've really got to look at where you're walking when you're walking with your dogs in the snow. Hey, Stacy Mantle from Arizona, where it never snows. What else have you got on our list for those people calling in, listening in, thinking... Well, it doesn't snow here in Florida. What can I do for the Christmas tree? All right. Well, this year we did a special, we call it Pets Geekly, and it's all holiday gifts for gadget-loving pet parents. So so we got some really fun cameras on here. Samsung has a new wireless video monitoring system, and it's just really fascinating because it has infrared technology so you can see what your pets are doing in the middle of the night. You know, if someone's getting into the garbage, you know who it is. If someone's, if you're out. Exactly. 
there is no escape from this the system. It's really neat. Do we also have? I, I often wonder what's going on, you know, with my newborn puppies when I have a litter. I actually have one golden doodle left now from the last litter I had born this summer. So we're down. There's two there, but one one left for sale, and uh, so we're getting down. But when there's like nine and ten and a whole bunch of puppies or two litters, I wonder what they get up to at night. I've often thought about putting some kind of I don't know night camera. I guess I'd have to keep the lights on, and I wouldn't want to do that for the um, so it's a tricky thing, but I'd love to see what my pets get up to when I'm not there. So that's a great idea. Well, you know, the nice thing about this is you don't have to leave the lights on. There is no light from it. There's no light emitted from the camera and it picks up everything as clear as if it were day. Really amazing technology from Samsung and Motorola has another system out. And I would totally, I mean, especially if you have puppies, you need to get a puppy cam going. That's just full time running. This would be an ideal setup for you. They range. Well, you know what? If people are listening to this and they want to see some puppy cam footage, I do have it posted on Camp Good Dog Facebook. This summer, I did borrow somebody's GoPro camera and I set it up in the yard on a post. And we watched the puppies run into the camera and attack the camera, chew the camera, chew each other, wrestle. It was very, very funny. It's it's even funnier on um, sped up. If you speed it up, you see them running all over the place because they do do a lot of sleeping. There's a lot of puppy footage, live puppy sleeping footage, but uh, it's all there at Camp Good Dog uh, Facebook. And and also, I have a site called debwolf.net where you can catch my old radio shows and things like that. But petsweekly.com is where we want to talk about today. And, uh, okay, so we've t- kind of talked a lot about dogs. What about the kitties? What about the kitties on your list? I want to tell people, if you've got a cat, then you don't decorate a tree with a whole bunch of stuff that would clog their intestines and be irresistible to them to play with. So you kind of have a choice. You either have the tree with all the things you want Or you have a tree with only cat-friendly decorations, and that means no tinsel, nothing that's waving or shining or glittering, and no burning anything that's there when you're not around, no candles whatsoever. So, yeah, your tree won't be as spectacular. You can have a miniature tree or a tree in a room that you close, or the cat in a room that you close, but loose cats on a tree with dingly, dangly bits that sparkle and trail, they end up in their intestines, and that can kill them or cost you a couple grand at an overnight emergency clinic at their best of the year prices, New Year's Eve or something like that. So really, really watch it with the decorations with the cats. And no chocolate under the tree, water only. Don't use that chemical stuff they say will keep your tree lasting forever. If you want to, you can add sugar to the bottom. But don't use something that will taste and smell like yummy to the dogs and cats, but kill them. Okay, it's this serious, right? You don't want to. You don't want to do this Christmas morning, right? You want to come, come down to a happy scene, and so yes. I want to help you do that. Yeah. All right. So, Stacy, let's hear. What should we get our cats? Uh, we've got some really fun gifts. Now, you're really gonna like this first one. It's called the Tickle Pickle. I'm not sure if you're aware of that toy, but it's a crocheted cat toy filled with organic catnip that the cats just love, and it's 12 inches long. It looks just like a pickle, and the cats just kind of wrap their paws around it. They they just go crazy for this thing. They also I have a the- weird name, Stacy. If I didn't know better, I think we were on some other kind of show, some <laughs> kind of adult show. The Tickle well, Pickle, you know, really. I that for you. <laughs> I knew you'd like the Dickle Pickle. Hey, yeah. that's the name so, I like. That's right. right. We also have the Nico Napper, which is a little cat house, and it can also be used for small dogs. But it's an indoor. I like Nico Chan. Nico Chan's good. That's the company behind this one. She's about to talk about. They're really good because they donate a lot to shelters, and their toys are kind of adjustable, reusable. Your cat doesn't get bored. It's not like something that breaks the minute you take it out. They're really cool. So, okay, what have you got there, Stacy? Yeah, they're our favorite, and they're also on our toy list this year. And every year, we have fallen in love with their toys. But they just came out with the Nico Napper and the Nico Cabin. And so they have a little, it's a felt, it's really hard to describe, but it's like a plush felt covering and it's super, super soft. The animals love it. And it's a perfect cuddle place for your cat, your small dog, just to be indoors, but to still have their own separate area away from each other. And it just gives them some privacy, a little napping area. Uh, The roof attaches with zippers and Velcro and it really just looks great in any decor. So I really recommend that. That's retails. I believe it's $50 right around there. Um, You know, right now, pets are freaking out. Things are weird. 
there's presents and there's toys and there's food all wrapped up and maybe you've made the unfortunate mistake of putting chocolate under the tree or popcorn so you're further confusing that whole issue of decoration and food for your pets there's people coming and going there's stuff coming and going some of the people coming and going don't obey the usual rules of closing windows to keep cats in or closing doors to keep dogs in or locking gates or picking stuff up off the floor or whatever it is so they're getting their fair share of capers you know pulling off their little pranks with the socks they love to steal that the rest of the family doesn't let them have but guest grandma doesn't know better so now a puppy has grandma's socks in the backyard oh yeah they're getting away with murder coming up pretty soon and they're probably not getting their usual exercise which is a big problem for dogs for the cats you've got to keep changing that litter and you got to keep entertaining them and grooming them and playing with them. So it's really important we keep our pets busy so they're not a nuisance and getting into trouble this time of year, but also make the rules really simple. Make it really easy for grandma and the other guests and really hard for the pets to pull these pranks. Set it up to be safe. Okay, so that's something you can do for cat and something you can do for dogs. And we're going to go to break and come back and talk a little bit more about maybe the craziest thing Stacy's seen that you could get your pet for Christmas. Stay tuned to Animal Party on Pet Life Radio with Deb Wolf. Don't leave this party before it's over because the best is yet to come. Only losers leave the party early anyway. Party on. Back in a few. Dyson. The new Dyson Animal Backs are powerful bagless upright vacuums for homes with pets. Air muscle and radio root cyclone technology generates the strongest suction power to powerfully remove dust, dirt, and pet hair from the home or car. To order your Dyson Animal Back, go to DysonDeals.com. DysonDeals.com to order your Dyson Animal Back today. Dyson, music to your ears. I'm not much of a reader, but I do wish I were more well-read. There are so many great books coming out. I wish I could find a way to keep up. Audible.com makes it easy to stay well-informed and catch up on your reading simply by listening. Audiobooks from Audible turn downtime into uptime. You'll be more productive and become well-read. Now I'm able to catch up on all the great books I've been wanting to read. With Audible, I feel smarter. Pet Life Radio listeners, try Audible.com now and get your first 30 days of Audible Listener Gold Membership plan free. And get a free audiobook. Choose from over 100,000 titles. To get this great deal, go to AudibleDeals.com. That's AudibleDeals.com. Hi, I'm Dr. Jeff Werber from Ask the Vets with Dr. Jeff here on Pet Life Radio. We want to hear from you. Listen in. We're on every Thursday, 1 o'clock Pacific Time, 4 o'clock Eastern Time here on PetLifeRadio.com. We are one of the only live shows on Pet Life Radio, and I'm here to answer your questions. So you can call in at 877-385-8882, or you can drop me an email to drjeff at PetLifeRadio.com, and hopefully we'll see you here on Thursdays. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Pet you're, you're, you're inside the VIP room. With the hottest party in town. Back to the party. Let's go. Hello. You're back on Animal Party with Deb Wolf. And we're on Pet Life Radio, of course. And I'm talking to Stacy Mantle from Pets Weekly. And you know what, Stacy? Before I ask you your weirdest thing for the year, because I love that, uh, before we get to that, I just wanted to tell you I was so irritated the other day because something I've talked about on air and I've told people about on air and I've talked to you about, you know how sometimes I give you these like homemade suggestions, this won't cost you a thing, take this and this from your cupboard and boom, you can get the mats out, right? I have these suggestions. Well, I came up with this great thing and I saw it being sold and someone else is making the money at the As Seen on TV store. Oh, that made <laughs> me mad. Oh, oh, like a little terrier. Yes. You know how for years now I've been talking about how you take your brushes that you take the snow off the car and when they're no good for that anymore, you make sure you screw them down really, really well against a platform that's very sturdy and you make one that goes up and you make one that goes over and you put that or you can just, you can just screw up to the door frame if you want on the outside and what happens is the cat passes it 
and rubs itself over and over and over and over and over and basically brushes itself. And you just go along and vacuum off these things. Well, it's worked wonders for me. Well, someone did it. They took a toilet brush, of all things, and bent its shape like an upside down U and anchored it on both sides. And there it is, my solution for a lot of money that I'm oh. not making, Stacy. What happened? How come it didn't go to market? Well, I just gave it out there. I just wanted people to enjoy, right? It didn't work. <laughs> oh, someone else yeah, is listening. You're still saving them thousands of dollars. So so that's the important thing. You're doing your part. Well, and it's cornstarch, if you're listening to that little hint I gave. It's cornstarch. If you've got cornstarch in your cupboard and you've got a dog or cat, maybe it's a golden retriever, and you know she has mats behind her ears or on her tummy or behind her underarm area, you know they're there and you've been avoiding them. Well, the best Christmas present you could give her would be to cut out those mats. Better than a bone. Better than a treat. So get your cornstarch and work it in with your fingers right into the mat and then brush it out. If you have to, you can cut, but be very careful. Cut only a a tiny, tiny bit at a time, and uh, you'll make her much more comfortable. Okay, so Stacy, what's the weirdest thing this year? Well, you know, there really hasn't been that many unusual things, which I have to say is very unusual in and of itself. But, you know, we've got the typical weird pet toys, you know, that are unusual styles, and, you know, uh, some of them not exactly, I, I guess, PG, uh, <laughs> which are unusual. But, you know, uh-huh. I'm getting the idea there. I yeah. remember last year there was, a, I think it was Planet Dog, and it was like a, a, it looked like a Christmas ornament. And at first you wanted to grab it and take it away from the dog because it looked like he was about to chew on a glass ball. But no, it's a durable doggy toy. Is there anything like that this year that's just cute, like really festive but practical? There are a lot of them. There's some really fun, well, dog and cat toys that are chewable that, you know, they have like the little beards that you can actually, oh, I I know of a strange one. How about the Duck Dynasty dog bearding? And it literally comes, do you ever watch Duck Dynasty? Is that in Canada? I don't know. I've seen, I've seen stores with that in it and I've wondered what that's about. What's that about? Duck Dynasty is a reality TV show about a group of guys that own, it's a family that owns a... Oh, yes, they do duck calls or something, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, we have that. Uh Okay, well, Quaker Pet Group now has the licensing for pet toys and pet sweaters and pet beards, literally pet beards, that you can get for your pet. It's based on the Duck Dynasty theory, so you can have your pet wearing a long beard. I actually had my cat with wearing a beard, and we also put it on our dogs. It's just a cute, fun little thing, but it works great for Christmas because it's like Santa firing your cat. So that is a fun toy. Santa firing your cat. Your cat just is cringing as he, he's looking for spots right now, as you say that, under the dry, think, above the dryer, under the bed. It's one of those things where you just need to put it on, take your picture, take it off, and quit stressing your animal out. <laughs> yeah, stick it on Facebook and be done. Don't make it's them wear that. it all day. And exactly. that's true for all your costumes. You want to make sure that they don't go in the mouth or nose or eyes, that they don't drag or impede your pet, make it hard for them to walk in any way. Or they get pissed off and they won't like it. You want it to be exactly. super comfortable, not boiling. And, you know, make sure you give lots of praise, treats, rewards, cuddles, whatever, balls, whatever it is your dog or cat loves, give it to them when they're wearing the silly costume. And then take it off. The next time, put it on longer. Take it off. The next time, put it on longer. Like that. And you'll have a dog. I have this dog, Vegas. He's uh, about 12 now. He's a standard poodle. And he just loves dress up. As soon as the costumes come out, my daughter, who's eight, pulls out these costumes. And he's just, like, totally into it. He's just, <laughs> he's, he thinks it's his turn to have his hair done, you know, because he's just received so much praise and attention over the years for putting up with this that they're, you know, better him than me when it comes to the makeovers my daughter does. I got to tell you, Stace. <laughs> I'm glad we got a volunteer for all those hair barrettes and braids. Yes, absolutely. I, I wouldn't be able to take it. I mean, personally, I'm not a big dress-up fan. But my dog, you know, I do have a couple of dogs that will po- tolerate it. And my cats will tolerate it, which is funny. They're always the first my to try groomer, it. My it's, groomer yeah. does her standard poodles, who's black, nails, really vibrant, fluorescent glitter and gemstone colors. And my daughter is just taken with that. That's impressive. But you know what? People think it's maybe not the best thing to 
get fancy with the hairdos and all that. With something like a standard poodle, a medium poodle, toy poodle, you're going to have them cut a few times a year no matter what. Or they're going to turn into a big tangly mess, you know, in their eyes and their nose and their bums. And, yeah, they, they need to walk. They need lots of room between their joints. They've got a coat designed for cold weather. They've got a coat that can handle the coldest, coldest water. So if you don't have Arctic temperatures year-round, you want to shave that dog skinny in the summer so why not have some fun with it you know it's, a, it's only a few times a year why not go crazy with it? It, it the dog really doesn't care I once had an experience when I was a little girl where our standard poodle had just come back from the groomers and he walked into the house and my mom was so proud of him she loved it when he was groomed he smelled like perfume and his hair was all soft she didn't like the perfume part but he, he was all coiffed and you know the curly bits were all brushed straight and fluffy fluffy and, and he just looked amazing and he strutted into the house and she said look how beautiful he is back from the groomer and the dog was like prancing prancing posing posing then my mom went upstairs and my dad came in and my dad liked the dog to look more like dog he liked it to look furry and big and sort of messy and he didn't like all this hairdo business so he came in and he looked at the dog and he said oh what have they done to you oh look at you Poor guy. And he's like thinking, oh, man, you look like a girl, you know, and he's all upset. And the dog starts to cower and sulk and mope around. Same haircut. Dog probably felt better. It was a hot day. He didn't need all that hair. But really, the dog couldn't care less one way or the other. He doesn't care what he looks like in the mirror. That's for you. So go for it if you want to be silly. As long as you're happy, your dog loves to share happiness. He loves to be around you making you laugh. So that'll work, right? Do something funny for Christmas and everybody will pay more attention to the dog, which is kind of nice this time of year when they get lost in the shuffle. Yeah, yeah. You know, we always post our rules for kids, though, so we make sure that they know how how to deal with our pets before they come in and you know we have an infographic that they can download and just post on their door so that people that don't normally have pets or you have visitors or things like that there's some basic rules on working with animals and you can't just you know you know the rules but you can't just run up to them you need to like let them come to you and and we have some we put it in the graphic form for kids and put it so they can hang it on the door and oh, that's just, really you know. nice, and you can find some of that at Pets Weekly to keep your pet safe. Even if your pets know kids, yeah, you really shouldn't have food on the ground when strange kids come over. Maybe the kid's going to reach into it. Maybe the kid's going to move it around. Maybe the kid's going to step in it. Maybe the kid's just going to bug your pet. Your pet needs to know it gets to eat uninterfered by strange kids and other other strangers, really. It needs to know the rules. And if, if you're going to have a chaotic, crazy house where you can't control how people treat your pets, then it's a really good idea to either send them out to a friend who's got quiet, a place they know well, or a kennel if it's a dog, or a quiet room can work wonders. You just have to make sure the door is closed with a sign on it, and nobody goes in there. Let the cat have a break. Let the dog have a break, because it's going to be busy. Another thing I want you all to be worried about, or maybe not worried, how about this? Be happy to share your turkey, your roast beef, your ham, whatever it is. Be happy to share it, but don't share it for begging and don't binge your pet. Don't give him or her a giant dose of gravy. That's not what their body needs. Teaspoon of meat in with their regular cat food or dog food if it's a tiny cat-sized dog or cat. If it's a big dog, maybe a cup of meat or a half a cup in with their usual meal. That's going to go over great. But don't be binging on the fats. Don't let them lick out the roasting pan. This is a recipe for going to the vet with some serious problems and maybe even not coming back. So, so we want to make sure you're not doing that on Christmas Eve and you're making sure your garbage, which is even more dangerous because it has the bones and the foil, make sure that's way away from pets. And the wrapping, when it comes off, the presents goes right into a bag. I'm trying to think of all the other things I need to tell them for Christmas. Have you got a safety list on PetsWeekly.com in case they're hoping to get this all really easily? We do. We have it, like I said, just in a one single graphic. All I have to do is download it and post it on their door and they're in good shape. But, you know, I think one of the most important things is to ask before handing off pet food to people as far as just general safety rules you know on the trees remember your gift wrapping too it's not just the not just the tree and not just the lights but make sure your gift wrapping doesn't have a lot of long ribbons in it it's things that your cats want to get into or your dogs make sure that you know what's under your tree so if somebody's trying to surprise you like you were saying with a box of chocolates or some fun candy related items you're not gonna sniff that out 
Yeah, and it's hard to sort of interfere with that, but a sign on the door helps, you know, because then the person will hand you the chocolates and say, I guess you need to put this up away from the animals, you know, because they don't want to be responsible for something terrible that happens on Christmas morning when they were trying to do something nice. But on the other hand, you don't want to be nitpicky about the presents. So it's a little tricky. There's a little tricky etiquette here. And if you're in doubt, keep the pets out. That's the big, you know, if you can, if you have a separate room where the tree and presents can be locked away from all these critters, that's a great idea. Yeah. So, yes. yeah, yeah, I want you to have Christmas. Safe Hanukkah. Fire is a big Thanks. one. Make sure that your fireplace has a screen on it at all times. Make sure that you're only using flameless candles. It really With- amazes me how stupid, and I got to say, it's stupid, how stupid cats can be with yes. flickering candles. Like they'll bat it with their hand. And they'll play with it, and they'll look at it, and they'll stare at it, and they'll stalk it, and then they'll forget it's there and turn around and burn their tail. And then, because their tail's on fire, they'll run up the curtains with the tail on fire and light the entire house on fire. Like, yes. cats really, really, really got to watch it with flames. It's just some serious, serious stuff. I don't know what it is with them, but they just don't seem to get it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> now, the other thing we have is uh, a lot of people burning or, you know, just putting incense in or trying to make the house smell better. And that can create a lot of asthma problems for your pets So and for you. So it's important to remember, keep everything just on the low key. You don't have to have the perfect smelling house. And you can do some fun things without creating medical problems for your pets. Well, I heat my house in the winter with the wood stove. So for me, I have, I can put a pot of water with some cinnamon sticks on the top and then the whole house smells like cinnamon or orange peels or, you know, I have a lot of choices and it, and it makes the house smell nice. But I know people have potpourri out there and you got to watch that too because sometimes pets think it's food and sometimes it's very chemically treated. So you got to make sure you're, you're using natural things if you've got animals in the house. That's always the best bet. And I bet Pets Weekly has some recommendations for some natural things as well. Absolutely. You know, I mean, natural is best, obviously, if you can stay with the oranges. Remember, cats hate oranges. They hate citrus of any type. So keep that in mind. If you have a lot of cats, you might have start having some behavior problems. But for the most part, if you stay natural, you're probably in good shape. We always recommend with the plants to remember that poinsettias are poison, holly is poison, mistletoe, pine needles can be dangerous. So, so little things like that just... Keep them out of areas that your, your dog or cat are going to have easy access to. Pine needles, I've, I've heard they're toxic, but, you know, my dogs chew on pine trees all the time. So I'm thinking it's not going to be that big of an issue. It just depends on the animal. Make sure your pet's wearing ID. Oh, know. I'm glad you said that. And have your vet information because sometimes your vet's closed for 10 days. So know who you're supposed to go to if he's closed. And if you're leaving your pets with somebody like your niece who's 14, make sure she has that information because that's going to be really tough on her if your dog or cat gets into the neighbor's garbage and is vomiting and bleeding diarrhea and she has to somehow get somebody to drive her. You got to make this easy, people. If you're leaving pets behind, make it easy. If you go to a reputable kennel, they're going to make you fill out a form with all this kind of information so everything's taken care of but sometimes I think people expect a lot out of their pet sitters they get a friend or a family member who might not even like pets might even be allergic and they beg them for the favor and the person feels completely like like they don't know what to do at all they don't know how to walk the dog they didn't know they were supposed to bring a bag they forgot the bag because they never you know all this sort of stuff they get dragged around the neighborhood I mean If you are going to ask a friend, don't pick someone you would like to hang out with you. Pick someone who actually shows a real connection to your dog or cat. It's the friend who disappears when you're having a visit because she's off stroking your dog or petting your cat or playing, you know, hiding things for them or doing tricks or asks you if you wouldn't mind if she brushed your dog or took it for a walk. That's the person, not the person you like who's allergic and busy already because everybody asks her everything. No, no. Ask the person who's got that extra time who's already showing you. You know, maybe they don't want to step on your toes and take over your dog, but they don't have a dog right now and they always did and they sure wish they could go jogging with one. I've been in that situation. There's a lot of women out there who really wish they had a good dog to go jogging with. You might be surprised if you asked around your friend circle. So, okay, Stacy, what do you think about all this? Are we, do you think we're ready for the holidays or is there something great that we're overlooking oh i think we're we're getting there you know there's so many wonderful things we literally have five gift lists posted on pets weekly so i hope you guys will check them out there's just some fun things that you're not going to see on the typical gift list pup light is a good one critter zone we've got 
uh, treadmills, you know, just about everything you can imagine from a dollar to, you know, three or four hundred dollars. So lots of different wine charms. What about the music? I'm always <laughs> I'm amused by the first two songs and then I tend to change the channel but or get rid of the CD and put something else on. But you know those CDs they come out with every year with the cats, you know, meow, 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 meow. Like those. <laughs> Is there any of that this year? <laughs> Well, I, I guess if you want violence in your home. <laughs> violence in my uh, home. Yeah, dogs, exactly. My dogs have very little tolerance for it. And every time <laughs> I have another another cat singing something or dog singing something, it turns into a free-for-all over here. So so I try you to know, avoid I that. notice um, on the TV, if I'm watching a TV program and they've used a fake dog or cat noise nobody barks in my house but if they've used a real dog or cat noise especially a cat noise well no even bar dogs barking like if it's a documentary on wolves and you're actually hearing the wolves sounding in the background my dogs go stand outside and sing right but when they're playing a commercial where you know there's a jingle and then there's a bark they don't even they're like that's fake mom that's just <laughs> fake it doesn't I wish even my you dogs know were that smart. <laughs> my dogs just think everything's real and it turns into a free for all over here. But uh no, yeah. I don't have a doorbell. So if there's a doorbell in a commercial, my dogs don't go nuts. But I know most people, when there's a doorbell in a commercial, their dog goes running to look for the door. You know, oh, he's like, off yeah. to the door, dope the door. Doorbells security. are off limits in our house. <laughs> I mean, that's a release to hound signal. That's all that is. So we try to avoid that completely. <laughs> Cover but, it up. Do not push the doorbell. I have a little plaque on my door that says to release the hounds press here. And it, that's how they do it. So, um, there's a few yeah, uh, doormats like crazy. that. There's a few doormats like that. They say something like, um, ring doorbell and run dog needs exercise. You know, <laughs> like, yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> We have some great signs. I actually have some on our Facebook page at Pets Weekly Mag. And yeah, they're they're a lot of fun. We have a beware sign that says beware of and then it just hesitates and says just beware. <laughs> so between the cats and the dogs, I don't know who's more threatening over here, but it's it's a lot of fun. But yeah, Do your dogs me, treat your cats properly when you leave the room? Or are my they Oh, I bet you'd want to know with a cat, right? Sorry? My cats run the house. My dogs are terrified of the cats. So yeah, they if the cat's on the couch, the dog is not. If, you know, if the cat's doing something, the dog is not doing it. it. She has total control over those dogs, complete. So it's really funny. I don't know why they're so terrified of her, but it is interesting. She but they get on great. She probably attacked them in their sleep when they were young. She was strategic. I she, think she so. I think she had some early. major plan going. Yeah, it seems like it was a... They, she had something going on that, that covers it. She's definitely got it covered. Yeah, I know. If cats ran the party system, their party would always win. Oh, they absolutely. They really are political, political animals, more so than dogs, which is interesting. But I guess a cat colony like a dog pack has its politics. But dogs, oh, dogs are more straightforward. Absolutely. You know, one thing we didn't cover is some fun gifts for the owners of pets. So if you okay. have somebody yes. that you may not know, you know they love dogs, you know they love cats but you don't know their, their breed that they like or anything specific. You know, we have some really cute gifts, some holiday wine glass charms that you can use for entertaining. And the little charms each say something individual. So you know which glass is yours when you're at a party. And it's just kind of a dog related, but fun, you know, hosting gift. Nice. Those run about $10. They have some pet prints that are really colorful, kind of a I don't even know how to describe them, but the artist is Dean Russo, and he's very, very popular. He kind of does a modern art take on a cat or a dog, and you can get him in different positions, and it's a nice little piece of artwork, and it's just kind of fun for the home. And we've got some animal-themed coffee mugs that, you know, everybody loves their coffee or their tea, so that's always a good bet if you got a friend that you just need a short, small gift for them or, you know, something that they're going to enjoy. These yeah, things are so, I mean, it's so easy. When you have to get something for, you know, $20, $10, you have to get something, but you don't know the person well, or you do know them well, but you know they're nuts about their dog. It's not like you have to second guess. Oh, do they ha already have it or do they want it? You know what? They're going to find a place in their life for a mug with their favorite kind of pet on it, right? Absolutely. If this person, and it's such an opener, if they put it on their desk with 
pencils in it at work or they use it at their favorite coffee house or whatever. Anybody else who likes pugs or beagles or dogs or cats or whatever is going to talk to them. It's a very social thing. And they're going to like, they're going to be talking about their beagle with someone else with a beagle. Then you might not have to talk to them about their beagle anymore. Win, win all around everybody. (laughs) And these are really adorable. I mean, it's little, like the coffee mugs have little sayings on it. Like it's all fun and games until someone ends up in a cone and then it's got a little graphic of a dog in a cone it's a very generalized graphic or oh i love that one oh the another one says your dog, i love it Yay. is that cute another one says your dog doesn't know sit <laughs> so it's just kind oh, of that's good too. so these are just really fun little you know generic items that you can get somebody that you may not know very well but again like you said it's a great opener it's something that they're they're realizing that you're putting some thought into what they enjoy and they're, you're paying attention, especially like a coworker. And they yeah. have those special interests. And I, th- I think these things are really great. And not so expensive and awkward and perishable and all this kind of stuff. Like some gifts. Man, it's hard to get them there safely. It is. And, you know, like we have a little painted uh, leash hook. It's they, It comes in painted or stainless steel. And it's just a little dog house that has a little hook for your leash that you can kind of put anywhere near the door and it just hangs your a place to put your leash on. I mean, they're $15 and free shipping and, you know, it's just a fun little item that you can ship anywhere. It's not going to cost you a fortune. You know, you can get this stuff online and have it shipped out of state. Out of the country. Yeah, this weekend was the weekend. We had the, uh, just, we just over, we had Black Friday and Cyber Monday, and all that stuff is brand new in Canada. We didn't used to have it. It started a couple years ago. It's building and building. So now we get it, too. We even get free shipping, too. It's very, very exciting. I used to spend more on shipping presents across the country and to the States than I did on the present, you know, and that just seems exactly. nuts when these things, sometimes the thing was being made close to where I was sending it, but I had to buy it somewhere and then, bring it, you know, and this, this poor thing was traveling all over the universe just to get 10 kilometers from where it was made. And I was paying for that. It seemed crazy. I saw those flying things. Did you see the Amazon flying thing on the news? Oh, the drones. Oh, are you kidding me? That's like my dream. I love it. Of course, I don't know how long it'll last with my dogs because I just picture those things landing That's in my right. backyard. Okay. My dogs would take that thing I, down. Totally. Totally. You know? I, I was thinking that too. What about... <laughs> What about dangerous things like, you know, chocolate for dogs? Dog gets a hold of a drone with a chocolate and dies. Or kid gets a hold of a prescription med coming from Walgreens and dies. Or or people stealing those things. But also, I can't imagine one of those things flying across my property with my commercial dog kettle. Everybody would be like, okay, whoever gets it's a winner. You know, what's in the box? And if it was ever food, oh my God, they'd be chasing drones the rest of their life. Yeah, cheese of the month club coming by drone to the dog kennel. (laughs) Good luck. Right? Imagine. It would be horrible. (laughs) Worry about the birds with that. Because the birds of our world are already, and the bees, inundated with these signals that interfere with their flight patterns. And if we had every single package having its own signal back and forth, back and forth, I think they almost already do in those, but they turn them on and off. If it's in flight, it would be on the whole time. That I think we'd have a lot of bird problems and then larger problems maybe people would get headaches i'm hoping it doesn't come i'm hoping it doesn't come well i think we're we're a ways away from it i mean the faa said that they're developing protocols for the commercial use of drones but i don't know i think there's still a lot to consider and and you're right you know public awareness and in working with the animals and the wildlife i i just think there's a lot of problems so i don't Um, know we'll see we'll see what happens i think we're gonna have to to get our packages the usual way. We just had, the, I think, the first Hanukkah ever where Black Friday and Cyber Monday fell right during Hanukkah. So I was saying to my friends, I think that means God really is Jewish because, <laughs> because it sure saved me some money on my list this year. But, or it should have if I'd been doing it right. Very hard. They jack up prices and then bring them down. And that's yeah. something I like about Pets Weekly is that you're reviewing things. I'm not going to buy something like I do sometimes online and I get it here and I go, really? That's what it looks it's like exactly. oh <laughs> is that what i ordered huh but it's half the size of the dog i bought it for 
No, this is a problem. You know, it said large dog. That's a large dog. What does it think is a large dog? You know, like this sort of stuff, the pounds, the color, the size, all this stuff. And then will it actually work? Does it function? At least I know if I go through Pets Weekly, you don't put anything on there that's really going to break, right? That's just a No, crap. We, we focus on products that we've reviewed and have had good experiences with. We don't even mess around with negative reviews because, frankly, there's too many great things to write about. So we try to stay with the things that we enjoy. Unless okay, it's but you get sent a lot of stuff, right? You get sent Oh, we get sent so much stuff. You okay, mean, okay. So I want you, without telling me the brand, without okay. without shaming them, can you tell me about something that doesn't work that's really stupid that you've been sent in the last year? Oh, boy. We've had several of these things. We've sure. had some toys that are oh that are just so ridiculous. I can't even imagine anybody ever using them for cats. Uh, like what? I'm trying like- to think of one in particular. That's not going to destroy the brand. And it's really hard because it's the only one that does it. I'll have to think about that. Cause okay, next time so I have you on, I'm going to ask time, you that. Yeah, we'll talk I about I want to know, next time, I usually ask you the best. Next time, I'm going to ask you the worst. Because I'll have you back on, on Animal Party, Fat Life Radio. Yeah, I want to I hear what the real crap is. Because I watch on TV sometimes and I think, oh, that'll never work. But, you know, I want to hear if you actually tried it. Like this thing they show on TV. I've seen it a whole bunch of times. And it's like a, a square of fake grass with a tray underneath, and they talk about how, oh, there's no odor, as they show this gigantic dog pissing all over. No, no odor at all. Okay, I got to tell you, though, that, actually, kitchen. that actually works. It really does. They, It's treated. The reason it works is because it's treated. The grass is treated. The You put a chemical over the top of it after they're done. That's treated. Everything's treated. So it really doesn't have a smell. And it's great for apartments, boats, um, things like that. I would never use it in my house because I don't want to encourage them to go in our house. Oh, but yeah, We want them going outside, don't we? And I think people with puppies often think that this type of product will be a good interim. I suggest no interim. If you've got exactly. a yard, if you've got access to the outside, if, if you mean to have your adult dog pee and poo outside, then don't go with a medium solution like paper on the floor. Go right from sleeping in the kennel or crate to outside to pee and poo. Pick a tree, any tree. That's your spot. Stick with it. Walk him on leash there. When he goes, tell him how great he is. Give him a word like pee-pee outside in another language if you like or bathroom break, whatever. Good boy. Good boy. Nice one. You know, and then you come in. And, and so the dog learns to go out there because anything in the middle is confusing. And eventually yeah. they might start going in that spot again or on paper again or on something similar again. So just if it's going to be grass, go with grass. If it's going to be gravel, go with gravel. Teach them what they need for their whole life from when they're a puppy. Okay, but this thing sounds like it's all right for apartment dwellers and people are going to be out a long time. I'm very surprised you said that, but that's why I want to hear from you what doesn't work. Okay, everybody, this has been our holiday show. And for more on how to keep your pet safe, do go to petsweekly.com. I also want to caution you about antifreeze. It's a pretty deadly killer. One tablespoon can kill a golden retriever. So use the kind that's safe. If you're using the kind that's dangerous, keep it way out of reach and close. One tablespoon can also kill a kid. It tastes and smells like candy. So you watch your antifreeze and have a very, very safe holiday from me, Deb Wolf, the animal party on Pet Life Radio, and my guest, Stacy. Do you want to wish them a happy holiday? A very, very happy holidays to all of our readers and all of your listeners and we're really excited for this next year. So hope everybody will join us and hope everybody enjoys their holiday breaks. And be good dear animals. Keep walking them. Keep grooming them. Keep taking care of them over Christmas and you'll have a better holiday. Be good dear animals. Until next time, it's Devil. Let's Talk Pets. Every week on demand. Only on PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs>